unless we can start think, thinking about the overall motivational contribution to executive function, as we mentioned before, uh, the uh, overall task selection is guided by uh, larger considerations of the bottom line. You know, what is it in it for me? What kind of goals, uh, outcomes, overall cost benefit analysis is is present here? You you do have a part of your brain that really is this kind of really kind of core economic uh, bottom line type of system in your brain. The accountant counting the beans and deciding what is in it for me, right? And so this anterior cingulate cortex, that cingulate cortex we're talking about, the anterior portion of that seems to be the final integrator, uh, taking into account cost information that's maybe represented in a slightly more posterior area of anterior cingulate cortex, um, along with the positive outcome information, uh, what you could get by doing some plan of action um, and then all of these things kind of talk to each other as you consider different possible plans of actions, evaluating the possible outcomes, evaluating the kind of cost benefits in the ACC, the utilities as they talk about them in economics. And then once you kind of choose something, the basal ganglia will do this kind of gating, latch in this new plan, and then that helps provide the top-down biasing, uh, shaping, uh, gating that takes place in this kind of inner loop of the uh, supplementary motor areas, which are more concerned with kind of actually carrying out these plans that we've come up with. So this provides a very nice overall framework for understanding kind of the decision-making process and how that translates into execution and how it integrates these motivational components. Thinking about uh, how the frontal cortex is organized into a similar kind of uh, dorsal and ventral pathway that we see in posterior cortex, but now kind of concerned more for this kind of top-down executive control function, uh, but still more separated in terms of the dorsal areas being important for motor control. And so we saw in parietal, this notion that parietal cortex is mapping from sensory information into kind of action or responses. Uh, and so prefrontal cortex, dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, is providing this kind of top-down control for those kind of task representations. Interestingly, in the ventral areas of prefrontal cortex, we think uh, we know that those are more directly interconnected anatomically with the temporal lobe, and they may be more important for kind of top-down control and executive maintenance of uh, kind of language information, uh, semantic knowledge, things that are represented in the uh, temporal lobes as opposed to in the parietal lobes. And then if we kind of take this slice through the brain, this coronal slice, we can look at the medial part over here in the middle. Uh, again, this anterior cingulate OFC areas that are very important for this affective, hot, you know, kind of motivational stuff that really, you know, the key, key things that drive us as compared to lateral areas like out here in the dorsolateral and ventrolateral uh, prefrontal cortex that we think are more important for kind of sensory motor planning, like what am I actually going to do, but they're not really so directly themselves representing the kind of affective components of the overall decision. And so this together gives us a nice way of kind of parcelating uh, the overall uh, division of labor of these different portions of uh, frontal cortex. You can now subdivide that uh, medial and um, and kind of ventral prefrontal cortical areas into much more fine-grained uh, affective signals in uh, posterior versus anterior cingulate cortex here going, going along this axis. Um, you have this subgenual ACC shading into uh, OFC that seems to be very important, this area 25 that's very important for negative outcomes. Uh, this more uh, lateral area and MPFs and medial OFC is important for um, positive outcomes perhaps, and then you have more detailed uh, kind of uh, insula level representations of specific sensory aspects of outcomes that might be particularly affectively important, taste, smell, those kinds of things, uh, pain. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so the, this gives us an, an overall kind of map grounded very much by these subcortical pathways that we're talking about here, all these different areas in the amygdala and other uh, brainstem systems that anchor the kind of overall value map
of your ventromedial frontal cortex. This slide shows this key finding that the prefrontal cortex is among the areas in the cortex that's most greatly expanded in, in humans. And in particular, it seems like it's this dorsal lateral, these lateral areas of frontal cortex that are important for kind of holding on to and representing these elaborate plans and schemes that we come up with as people. Um, if you go down to, you know, cats and dogs, not so much scheming. Maybe you think your cat is scheming, but probably not. Probably just sort of doesn't care. <laughs> Other uh, species do have a lot of those motivational aspects of frontal cortex. We think those are kind of more evolutionarily uh, ancient and really drive the development of, of frontal cortex. Um, and then later, when you have kind of more time to come up with all these schemes and stuff, you have a, a, a use for these kind of more elaborate uh, social uh, interactions and cultural interactions and things like that that drive uh, evolution of the lateral prefrontal cortex in people. And here's, you can also look at it, you know, in comparison to other uh, apes uh, in terms of chimpanzees and gorillas, you do see quite a lot of frontal cortex even in our nearest uh, uh, ape species, as you go into the monkeys as opposed to the apes, you get kind of less uh, of this expansion of frontal cortex. And lastly, we can just talk a little bit more about the biology of the frontal cortex active maintenance, uh, this notion of a kind of collection of neurons that are being influenced by a common pool of thalamic neurons. So you have these thalamic relay cells. These are the ones that are getting inhibition from the basal ganglia. And there are these kind of loops that we talked about uh, between the pyramidal cells in the frontal cortex. This reverberation is a potential source of active maintenance, uh, a bidirectional excitatory loop. And then for sure, these kind of loops directly between pyramidal neurons um, these excitatory loops are also important for sustaining active maintenance. And we know that um, these channels, so NMDA, which we know is very important for learning, can also be very important for sustaining active memory because they have uh, an ability to stay open, the channels stay open for a longer period of time, and calcium is an excitatory ion, um, and so it does contribute to an overall kind of excitation of the cells. And so there's actually specialized versions of the NMDA channels in prefrontal cortex that seem particularly important for sustaining these loops in, even in the face of kind of interfering other information. Um, and uh, there's also metabotropic glutamate receptors that also have a long lasting effect that also are important for this kind of active maintenance function. All right, well, there's one other simulation on uh, the development of prefrontal cortex in the A not B task, and we'll let you go through that on your own. It's well documented.